So, I said I was going to do one mission. I'm going to do it. I'm going to send it to the big planet, the planet I was talking about a lot uh, two episodes ago or so. I want to go to Jewel. So I'm going to send a mission there, one that is capable of conducting a, a whole bunch of science that might help us learn a little bit more about it, about the dangers, risks, rewards, and so on. Now, unlike the moon, or Eve even, Jewel is much, much farther away. So we're going to have to have a much more sophisticated rig to get there. And this might be a little bit overwhelming, I have to admit, but uh, I'll show you what I've got. I call it Galileo. So, feast your eyes on this monster. Pretty intense stuff, right? Galileo is a beast compared to all of our other systems. To begin with, uh, I realize that this is really overwhelming, so I'm going to go step by step and explain what I've done here. Galileo is named after the um, orbiter mission that NASA sent to Jupiter, uh, our real-world giant, the biggest uh, gas giant that we have on our solar system. Um, and uh, let's see here. It was released in the 1990s. The um, orbiter had a dropping uh, lander that tried to go into uh, Jupiter itself, which yielded some interesting science as it descended into the hellscape of Jupiter's endless sea of clouds. Um, while the orbiter continued to stick around for nearly a decade before they deliberately crashed it into Jupiter. Um, so, all in all, a very big uh, adventure. And now Gal Galileo, our Galileo, will follow in its footsteps. So, let's begin by explaining this monster. Uh, there are three science uh, payloads here. Um, there's... Um, the top one here, everything from this decoupler that I have highlighted, or rather this um, this docking port that I have highlighted, everything up from here, that is going to be our landing probe. That's right, we're going to try to land on Jewel. Jewel is a gas giant, so there is no surface, I know, but it has a very thick atmosphere, and that means we might be able to parachute down safely into parts unknown. Provided it is in pitch black, we might be able to see something strange, which is the inside of a gas giant. I have no idea exactly how serious of a mission that will be around uh, Jewel, so I've decided to give it a try. I've put all the essential science packages on it. We've got a thermometer, our um, gravity scanner, we've got a seismometer, just in case we somehow land on the surface, and our barometer. Two goo experiments on either side. Our atmospheric um, recorder, which we recently got from our technology tree. This tape reel computer up on the top that I have highlighted is actually a um, measuring instrument. If we go to our smaller menu here and click Kerbal Engineer Redux, it will give us a bit of information on what we're looking at here. Uh, again, I'm not entirely sure what it all means, but for those of you who are a little bit more interested in the science behind what I'm doing here, I'll have a run uh, a live feed of the uh, statistics as we jump this uh, mission into Jupiter. Uh, a little bit further down, we have the probe itself, which is this uh, hexagon gray steel thing that I've been using a lot. Uh, it's hidden underneath some... Um, parachutes, eight parachutes to be exact, but I do have um, two batteries right here, and I have um, above those a um, FLA5 adapter, which is really more or less to make it more uh, look more sleek. It's not really necessary, but I think it looks cool. We have eight parachutes. Um, we're going to use those to help uh, slowly descend into um, Jewel and see if those help at all. Uh, beneath those, we have a new component called the um, monopropellant tank. Those are RCS fuel. We have four of those on board this mission. We don't need that many to put this on the trajectory that I wanted to. In fact, the upper part, the lander, needs the least amount of RCS fuel because we don't need to put it into orbit or have it do some insane maneuvers. I'm just going to throw it right at Joule. And once we put it on that trajectory, it won't have to adjust its course. So we'll see how well that goes. Uh, hidden behind all this... Um, item is the main chassis of the experiment, the Science Junior, which will also be conducting experiments when we throw it into the atmosphere. 
In the very unlikely possibility that we can actually land on whatever is beneath the surface of Jewel, I have put four landers here, um, and two more batteries underneath those, and that's more or less the lander, so that'll be trying to land on Jewel to see what happens. Uh, I've put some landing lights here just in case there's anything interesting near the, the bottom of the planet. Um, I've recently learned actually that if you right click the lights, you can actually change the color scheme on these with these sliders here uh, using RGB values. And I have them set for, um, for red, so if I turned it on, it would cast a red light like that. I figured that might be kind of cool delving into a dif uh, distant planet. Beneath the uh, docking port, we have the second phase of our science uh, mission, which is going to be the orbiter. Now, uh, this uses a bunch of new pieces as well. Uh, the main chassis of the orbiter, you'll notice that this hatch here, is actually a, um, a pod, a command module. A Kerbin could fit inside here. It's called the lander can. It's designed to be a lander, even though we're going to be using it as an orbiter. The only the top part is going to actually touch down on anything. Everything else is going to be orbiting or going to be part of our launch system. Uh, I have our standard science pieces right here, thermometer, barom uh, I'm sorry, gravity scanner, barometer, and seismometer, and our other engineer measuring unit. We have our um, our communications device right here, as well as up on top, every part of our science mission has a, um, a, uh, a communicator of some kind. That way we can make sure that we can actually transmit data back. I'm not going to put a uh, Kerbal inside of here actually, because I would have no way of returning him. So this isn't really necessary, you don't need to have a um, port that can house a Kerbal, uh, Kerbal. but in the unlikely event that we, um, we send anything there sooner than our big mission, it might be kind of handy to have an orbiting miniature space station floating around. On the outside, on the sides, we have our goo experiments, just like before. We have two of them for symmetry. Um, this right here, it, it, it sort of looks like this tall metal shaft that I have highlighted. That's actually a massive solar panel. Now, I'm not sure how much solar energy we're going to have that far out in the solar system, so I've decided to set it up to do an experiment here. If the orbiter runs out of energy, then we have the lower science experiments to be able to conduct the science that we want. But I figure it might be fun to try. I've put an extra amount of batteries on sort of, um, on board this um, machine here, just in case the solar panels don't quite do what I want them to. Um, underneath that, we have a Science Junior and RCS thrusters to put ourselves into the uh, stable place that we want to. Also, what look like the goo experiments here, these bigger ones, are actually... Um, more um, RCS fuel. In fact, each one holds 150 compared to the 100 um, that the smaller uh, ones had that we usually did. There, the smaller ones had that we had usually used. So we would get a lot more thrust out of this. And frankly, I think we would want it to be able to adjust as much as we want. Um, below all of this, we have another um, docking port. So again, uh, if we ever wanted to dock with this small orbiting space station, we totally could. And we have set up some lights here. I decided to try something funny with these and go for a purple light, because I thought that would look cool. Uh, beneath those, we have the final portion of our science experiment, the um, map set. Now, I'm not sure if we're actually capable of mapping a um, gas giant, but I want to see if it's possible. So, beneath the docking port, we have some RCS thrusters and this... Um, cone piece right here. I don't believe it's actually necessary to have a cone, but again, I think it looks a little sleek. That's the FLA-10 adapter. Um, beneath those, we have our, um, I believe we have our Science Junior underneath all of this massive, um, massive uh, goo experiments here and the um, RCS fuel tanks. The lowest part of the project has the most amount of RCS tanks because the um, map set needs the most specific orbit that I can put it in, so it's going to require the most amount of work to get to where I want it to go to. Beneath that, we have our engineer measuring unit that'll give us constant stat uh, statistics on our uh, landing, or not our landing, but our orbiting maneuvers. And we have some batteries as well. Oh, and I forgot to mention, actually, these that I have highlighted right here, these are our um, RTG units. They are nuclear power generators. They are not solar panels, but they function as them, where they provide constant energy. But the trade-off is that they provide energy to our uh, they provide energy to the batteries very slowly, so they take a lot more time to recharge the batteries. And uh, while they do la uh, they last the longest and 
work in the dark and very far away from the sun, they are unfortunately uh, really heavy. So really, these are only really practical for outer solar, like, the outer solar system. Uh, we have a commutatron right here, which will open up into a massive satellite dish, and our standard science pieces, thermometer, barometer, seismometer, and the gravity device. So everything I just described, those are the main science payloads. That's everything that's going to be hanging out around uh, the Joule system. Everything else beneath it, this massive system right here, this is all to get us there, this massive thrust um, system. Up on top, we have a, um, a new piece that I haven't really used before. I believe we've had it for a while, but I haven't used it. That is the Incline Advanced Stabilizer. Now, you may have noticed that the upper part of this craft is actually a little flimsy, and if I didn't have all these um, struts, this insane amount, like this insane network of uh, webbing of struts here, this whole upper science payload here would be wobbling like a noodle, and it would unfortunately cause the uh, the rocket to become unstable during its launch and crash. Um, that's why I put all these thrusts and all in this um, sophisticated um, looking uh, stabilizer. So hopefully this will keep us stable uh, up to the orbit, up to orbit. Once we get up to orbit, we don't really have to worry about atmospheric drag, and we can push our way the rest of the way there. Uh, we have, in order to balance all this, we have another piece that we call the Rockamax Brand Adapter. Um, that's more or less to give it a slicker appearance so that we can set this up a little bit more easily, and I think it helps with uh, drag resistance. Uh, we put down some lights as well. These are going to be sort of a cyan kind of light. Again, the lights that I'm setting up don't particularly mean anything. It's more or less just for show. Uh, further below, we have our upper stage for the thrust. Uh, around this very large tank that we recently earned called the Rockomax X2032, uh, we have some smaller uh, thrusters, and these are the... let's see, these are the... FLT-800 fuel tanks. So these will be um, thrusting along with our main engine here. Um, they will be fueling, they, we have some fuel lines connected to the main engine. Uh, each one of these will help fuel up the main engine while they also burn. Uh, and inside here, although we can't quite see it, I do have this um, Rockomax, uh, Rockomax uh, main sail. So that will be the main thruster that we use. It gives us a ton of thrust, and for fuel tanks this big, we actually need some pretty heavy-duty launch systems. Beneath that, we have a decoupler, this blue and uh, white striped um, device right here. Um, that is going to be what... Um, everything above here is going to be what more or less gets to Joule. So everything here is actually going to arrive at Joule. This upper stage might even be able to orbit Joule if we, able, if we set it up accordingly, but I, I'm not sure. Everything below that is not going to make it to Joule. Uh, right beneath it, I have another piece called the Advanced SAS uh, Module. It's a rather large ring that we've connected to the main uh, mission. None of these other um, stabilizers would fit, so we have to use that one. Beneath that, we have several um, X2032s. Um, in this really long shaft here, I'm not ex entirely sure how many I've applied. Um, I believe it's... Uh, let's see... One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them. Six of them in the main tower. And on the outside of the tower, we also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them on the outside. And those are all connected with struts and with fuel lines, just like our upper stage. So they will be providing fuel to the main stage as it goes up. Um, just like before, we have these separatrons connected to them so that when they run out of fuel, they will uh, launch ver uh, away from us so that they do not um, damage the uh, lower stage as they um, eject. We have some fins here to help with stability. Um, and we have them about halfway down as well. I'm not sure if this is the most practical way to do it, but it is kind of helpful. Even further down, we have these uh, boosters. These boosters here will be the first part of our mission. They will be the first to eject once we um, get high enough. I'm not sure if they're necessary, but I've been able to use them in testing, and they've turned out pretty decently. Uh, finally, um, as we get to the very bottom of the craft, we have our um, launch uh, stability enhancers, which will help us do our initial launch. They will eject as soon as we start to take off. 
And at the very bottom of our craft, we have one final launching component. This is called the LFB KR1 times 2. Uh, it actually has two small thrusters at the bottom of them connected to this large tank. All of our fuel from the main tank is going to be pushing out from here. Um, this provides a huge amount of thrust and actually acts as its own fuel tank, so it's our final little bit there that gets us to where we're going. So, I realize that's a very long explanation, but that's our Galileo mission in a nutshell. Now that was pretty long, so it's actually going to take one more video, but I am going to launch this. I'm going to show you the full launch from start to our trajectory into uh, Jewel which will be happening in the next episode. So until then, everyone, stay tuned and good night.